Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we have the ASUS ROG Rapture GT6 Mesh System for review. And it is very exciting because it is a gamer product. It is a product targeted at gamers. Look at how cool and gamery it looks. Those red and black accents. There's RGB. But beyond all the outside colors, there is some real great performance underneath. And that's what we're going to find out today. So big thanks to ASUS for sending me these two for review. Check out the links below where you can find the device for you from whatever provider or a retail store that you want. And let's get started by rolling the intro. All right, take a good look because they do look amazing. These guys are a designer's dream. They are just awesome. There's little lights and everything. We'll have a look at what comes in the box. And on the inside, we have some instructions. Advanced Wi-Fi helper. And straight away, we have these two large mesh devices. Let's grab one out. It smells very fresh. <laughs> the front, oh, it looks awesome. This thing looks great. This is very gamery. We've got Join the Republic on this side. For those who dare to cut in, there's a bit of a fan grate right here. And on the back, we've got some N and E. I'll check what these are. They look like coordinates. I don't know where to. We have our 2.5 gig or 1 gig WAN. We've got 1, 2, 3 LAN ports. They're all 1 gigabit. We've got our 3.0 USB power switch and DC in. And if we keep going, we've got Wi-Fi 6 on the side, gaming mesh router. And on the front, we've got the ROG I logo, the very cool and evil looking, kind of like a bird and Republic of Gamer right here. And these are not stickers. They're actually kind of printed or embedded into the plastic so they won't come off. On top, we have I'm guessing there is RGB inside here and you can see ROG just through the side there and a few more grills for the fans. Let's see what else comes with this. Wow, okay. Are you telling me there's a brick for this? Is there a brick? No way. Wow, damn. Okay, there's a brick. And we've got a single ethernet cable, probably cat 5e or cat 6, I'm guessing. And that's it from this box. Let's talk about the actual performance and then why this is a gamer's choice of Wi-Fi mesh systems. First of all, there are nine internal antennas inside here. You can actually see some of them right here. That means we get a 2.4 gigahertz system that's up to 574 megabits a second, a 5G, system which is obviously the fast one but lower range at 4804 megabits a second and then you have a backlink between the two that is also 5g and that is 4804 megabits together totaling you guessed it around 10,000 megabits a second hence it is a ax 10,000 system and ultimately it means great performance but in technical terms, it is actually high efficiency. That's really what Wi-Fi 6 is about. The AX part is a draft amendment that defines modifications of the 802.11 physical layer and the medium access control sublayer for high efficiency operation in frequency bands between one gigahertz and six gigahertz. And as Wi-Fi 6 handles client density more efficiently, it means higher speeds, it means more channels, it means higher throughputs, it also means the connections are always getting the fastest speed. And Wi-Fi 6 also uses a client-based power saving mechanism that schedules wake times to improve battery life for your mobile devices. Now powering all those smarts, because after all, it's a gaming product. What are the specs of the CPU? Well, it's a 1.7 gigs tri-core processor. The memory is 256 megabits flash, and it does have some really epic RAM at 512 megabytes DDR4. Now on the back, we have three one gigabit ports and one of them is actually a gaming port. The blue one here is your main connection to the internet and it's 2.5 gig WAN, which means that if you have a very fast internet, you will be able to take full advantage of it. And if you don't, 
well, it doesn't really matter, right? But the 2.5 gigs means that when it does suck out all that internet and spread it across the mesh, each one of these ports and your other mesh device will have enough bandwidth to go around. And that's really important. Generally for a Wi-Fi 6 system, the biggest bottleneck might actually be your internet connection. And what does that capacity look like? Well, compared to a Wi-Fi 5 system, it is actually four times the capacity. It's 2.7 times the speed compared to Wi-Fi 5, and it supports the illusion 160 Hertz channel which just adds a whole bunch of performance. So what is that secret sauce? Well the ROG Rapture GT6 supports the newly expanded UNII4 spectrum also known as the 5.9 gigs band. It brings a third and clearer cleaner and less messier 160 hertz channel without any radar system interference. Since the GT6 is gonna leverage this channel for the backhaul, it means incredible performance between the two devices, the connection. Apparently this can increase performance by up to 20% and you know what? I could see this being used in a little shed somewhere and this one right near the window so you can get some excellent speeds across without running extra cables. All right, let's jump into some testing. The first test I did was very simple. Turn one off and keep one on. Use a laptop to connect via Wi-Fi 6 to the single mesh and then back through the one gigabit port out the back into the server computer. That way I have a maximum throughput of 1000 megabits a second or one gigabit and I can see the performance of just connecting directly to this. Now I did a few tests and it was really odd. One of the ones that really stood out was this one here, 688 down and 678 down. Uh, great performance overall, but it's not that one gigabit that I was expecting. Now this next test requires my laptop to be locked in to only connecting to this mesh device while the back hole 5G connection is then connected back to this one, which has the connection to the server where I test the speed. Hence, uh, the actual app from ASUS does have a feature to lock in devices to individual mesh systems, which is awesome. And once you're connected to that node, it does stick to it. I couldn't think of a reason other than testing to do it, but maybe you just want one device connected to it and you don't want it switching back. In that case, the speeds were incredible. First of all, the down was 849 megabits a second and the up was 587. You'll notice the ping went up only by two, which is awesome. And I guess what I want to point out is that if you're using via Wi-Fi 6 to this one and then 5G connection back hold to this and then back to the internet, I suppose, then you'll have great performance. It is a good way to extend the coverage in a home and connect back a one gigabit system. So what does the speed of the one gigabit via the 5G backhaul to the one gigabit connection look like? Well, this will impress you to no end, I think. Getting rid of the laptop's Wi-Fi 6 connection and going directly to the one gigabit port right here and then only the 5G backhaul, which is using that 160 Hertz UNII4 channel, you get this, 978 megabits a second down and 967 megabits down with a four millisecond ping. That is incredible, just shows how good of a solution this backhaul channel is. Now let's look at what makes this a gamer device. On the back we have gaming port. What the hell does that mean? Well, actually, not really that much. It does prioritize LAN 1, the port that says gaming port, for some of the settings that you turn on. So let's try turning on some of these settings. There are three settings in the app that allow you to switch on streaming mode and gaming mode, and then there is QoS, but if you have time, have a look at the video below, it's already been released, about the GT6 settings that can help and increase performance for gaming online. Let's have a look at the tests we ran for these optimization settings. So what we're doing is we're repeating the test we did before. We've got a Wi-Fi 6 laptop connected to this mesh device, then we have a 5G backhaul with the 160 hertz channel, and this device here is connected by the one gigabit cable to the server that's running the speed test. So what we're comparing it is to these results, 849 megabits down and 587 megabits up. Once I turned on the gaming mode, we got some incredible improvements, 908 megabits down and 617 megabits a second up. How awesome. 
Now, the priority is set to that device specifically. The optimization isn't done on this device, it's actually done on the device that needs to be the gamery device. So if you've got a console connected via Wi-Fi, you will go into the app, select the device you want to give the game performance mode to, and that one will be prioritized over all other devices on the network. It'll get much more bandwidth, and generally speaking, it'll perform much better. On the other hand, we also have the streamer setting. So you would set that as your Wi-Fi TV. And so when I changed the profile to an optimization for streaming, the difference was pretty interesting actually. The ping drastically jumped up to nine, but the down speed went to 922, and the upload went up to 810 amazing performance. So when you get this device and you set it up, my recommendation is to go through each device that is either a streaming device or a gaming device and set them up with this optimization. Yes, it might be a little bit tedious, but I highly recommend it because it does really change the performance. Now the last performance mode is just general optimization and we got 849 and 587 down. Good performance, nothing exceptional. I don't think the optimization really changed anything. All right, getting the exciting stuff out of the way, let's talk about some of the boring stuff, the standard mesh system specifications. This can cover up to 5,800 square feet, which is around six rooms. I would recommend a house of four to five for these two. I think if you wanna get really extreme speeds, you wanna make them as central as possible. Obviously, these are just standard mesh devices at the end of the day, but there are some optimizations and backend settings, and that's the value to a gamer, where if you have a family of a lot of people, especially six rooms, right, you might actually have a lot of kids, well, you would want to set your PC or your gaming console as the priority, and so if the kids are watching YouTube, watching Netflix, it's not going to affect your gaming performance. Let's talk about the settings inside the admin menu. There are some really cool little bits that ASUS has put in to make your gaming life easier. And one of those things is one-click port forwarding for specific games. This means that you can select your game, press set, and you'll have the game forwarded port set without having to fiddle around with it manually, finding the ports, and then copying and pasting them and setting them up. It is actually a little bit tedious and kind of scary for a lot of people to do this, even though most can do it with any router that has port forwarding. This just makes it so much easier. It is with one click. There's obviously QoS, quality of service settings. But like I said before, with the gaming and streaming optimizations, you probably won't need to touch QoS at all. Furthermore, there is some parental controls that I absolutely love. Now that my son is growing up, I'm certainly planning to use this. You actually have multiple profiles depending on the person's age, and then you can set what they can see or not. It's a very welcome system, and and it's very intuitive and the menus are really easy to follow. Now all this good stuff comes at a price. This thing is 600 USD. Very, very expensive. And that's for two of them. Yes, it has fantastic coverage. Yes, it has all the bells and whistles. It has USBs. It has the ability to use a Android phone as a 4G backup. It looks awesome. It has RGB. Yes, great but it is $600. And if you translate that to Australian rubles, then it's $1,000. So is this system worth 600 American dollars? No, it's hard to say. It has everything you need in the palm of your hands to activate game mode. The performance is there. The look and feel is there. You are absolutely paying a premium for all of that. Will you get the same performance somewhere else? Well, there are cheaper solutions like the X-T9 from ASUS that will get you very similar performance and has some gamer modes, but it just won't all be in one good looking package like this. So here's my recommendation. If you are a hardcore gamer from both PC and console, and you have those devices separated by a few rooms, you wanna get the fastest internet you can to the console and to your gaming PC, then use this device via the backhaul 5G connection, especially if you're in a rental where you can't plow through walls and add new cables. Even if you're in your own home, it's still tedious and takes a lot of work to do so. 
And then you will have an amazing mesh system all around the house for all your other mobile devices. But knowing full well that you can take advantage of the port forwarding for games, you can take advantage of the prioritization for gaming and streaming devices, and you get all that with the click of a button. That's what makes it worthwhile, but it is a premium product. Friends, thank you very much for watching. Huge thanks to ASUS for sending me these for review. I have been blown away about how far this industry has come for mesh devices and especially the gaming support. So it is a big recommendation from me if you can afford it, but there are other systems if you're just looking for a mesh system. Don't buy this just for a mesh system. In any case, thanks for watching. Like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll catch you all in another video. Bye!